Hello and welcome to Mr Manley History Teacher's latest video on how to successfully answer the which interpretation do you find more convincing about style question and it's worth eight marks of your Germany from 1890 to 1945 democracy and dictatorship assessment paper. Let's get started with the main tips on how to answer this type of question. So first of all, this question we're covering in the video is the third question in the Germany assessment paper, and it's worth eight marks, as I mentioned on the previous slide. So what you need to do to get the highest possible marks of this question? You need to spend roughly equal time addressing both the interpretations. You don't want to write loads for interpretation A and only write a little bit for interpretation B. You want to be spending approximately the same amount of time and write a similar amount for each interpretation. Like question one, you don't use the provenance of the interpretations in your answer to this question. You only need to focus on the content of both the interpretations and your own contextual knowledge to answer this type of question. Because this question is worth eight marks rather than the previous two four mark questions, you want to spend approximately 10 minutes answering this question and you need to make sure you give a judgment on which interpretation you find more convincing. If you want to have a watch of my previous video on why the authors of the interpretations might have different opinions or interpretations about a particular event or issue, click on the link in the top right corner of the screen now and you can watch that previous advice video on how to answer that question. So here we have a question and a model answer to this particular type of assessment question. So which interpretation do you find more convincing about Hitler's appeal to the people of Germany? Explain your answer using interpretation A and B and your own contextual knowledge. So what we need to focus on for this type of question is the content of both interpretations. So in interpretation A, it really focuses on Hitler being a hypnotic and persuasive orator or speaker. It doesn't really give too much focus or too much credit to other factors as to why the Nazis were able to gain so much support from the German people or why Hitler was able to appeal to such a broad section of German society. In interpretation B, it focuses more so on the Great Depression, which is referred to as the World Economic Crisis here in interpretation B. However, interpretation B does also mention Hitler as well. So it gives a couple of different reasons, a couple of different factors why Hitler was able to appeal to such a wide variety of German people. Let's turn our attention to the model answer now itself. Interpretation A is convincing to a certain extent. We haven't said it's completely convincing. We've just said it's convincing to a certain extent. And to get the best possible marks for these types of questions, you need to give a sort of nuanced judgment in terms of both interpretations and how convincing you think they are. It says that Hitler was a charismatic and a persuasive speaker. So we've actually quoted some content from the interpretation there who stirred audience emotions by blaming foreign powers, Jews, and the Weimar Republic for Germany's problems. So we've shown a bit of our own contextual knowledge there, and by quoting a word or a phrase from the interpretation, that's showing the marker that we're using the interpretation itself as well. However, the interpretation is less convincing to an extent, as it does not mention other factors such as the Great Depression or the effects of the Treaty of Versailles on Germany for raising the appeal of Nazism to the German people. So we've given both sides there. You don't actually have to. If, you, if you'd if you written that the interpretation is really convincing, you actually don't need to give reasons why it is less convincing. However, you do need to make sure that by the end of your answer, you have made it clear to the marker which interpretation you find more convincing over the other. Let's have a look now at interpretation B. On the other hand, interpretation B is very convincing. So we've made it clear from the start of this section of our answer that we think interpretation B is very convincing and probably more, in, more convincing than interpretation A. As it still mentions Hitler as a factor behind the Nazis' appeal to their own people, but states that Hitler's appeal was facilitated by the Great Depression. 
So we're finding this interpretation more convincing because it's giving more than one factor or more than one reason why Hitler was able to appeal to the people of Germany. And we're showing here some excellent own contextual knowledge. The Great Depression caused six million Germans to become unemployed. And this in turn caused them to turn to Hitler for solutions in an effort to overcome their financial and social challenges. So again, we've got some really good own contextual knowledge there. We've rounded this off at the end of our answer with a brief judgment. Therefore, interpretation B is more convincing than interpretation A. That's what you really need to focus on in your answer to get those set, those top marks, seven or eight marks out of eight, to make sure that it's clear in your answer which interpretation you are finding more convincing. The best answers will be clear to the marker throughout which interpretation is more convincing rather than leaving the marker guessing until you get to the end of your answer. So let's recap those top tips again. Spend roughly equal time addressing both interpretations. Don't weight your answer on one interpretation over the other in terms of the amount you're writing, but you do need to give a judgment throughout as to which you think is more convincing. Like question one, don't refer to the provenance of either of the interpretations. You don't want to do that, so I'll put that in red. Use only content and your own knowledge to answer this question. Finally, you want to be looking to spend approximately 10 minutes answering the question and to give a judgment as well throughout your answer if you can, if you can but definitely at the very least at the end of your answer. I hope you found the video useful. Give the video a like and subscribe to my page, Mr. Manley, History Teacher.